In Michigan, we don't get a lot of earthquakes. This isn't California. We're not near any really major faults. When I was in college, I experienced my only earthquake. I've been through a few, apparently, but they're so small in Michigan, you almost never feel it. I felt one in college. It felt like a truck going by the house. That's it, okay, not very exciting. Uh, not a lot of shaking going on. About four hours ago, we had an earthquake. And uh, I wouldn't be commenting on that because it's very small. I mean, nothing over four, okay? But the reason I'm commenting on it is because it appears to have been caused by an asteroid strike in Lake Erie, I believe. Welcome to Friday evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Andrew Humphrey. We fielded several phone calls about houses shaking, buildings shaking, feeling the ground moving in Monroe County. Well, it is not your imagination, folks. Those of you who are in Monroe County near the city of Monroe, we had an earthquake this evening at 6.55 p.m. That was just about an hour and a half ago, uh, about just under two miles south-southeast of Detroit Beach. That's where the epicenter was. Intensity was weak to uh, to light, so it was a very minor quake, 3.2 to 3.4 magnitude on the Richter scale, but felt as far away as places like Novi, the southwest side of Detroit, even southern Macomb County around Warren. So far, no other quakes, but I'll keep an eye on it for you. I'm meteorologist Andrew Humphrey. More coming up at 11 o'clock. This is significant because in my last few posts, I've been talking about this Dana Coverstone situation, this dream that he had where he had a dream in December and from the dream, it kind of predicted the COVID-19 situation, the Black Lives Matter riots, and even the coin shortage. And so if you haven't seen those videos, go back and look at them because this kind of relates to that. In my last video, I mentioned how the guy from Israeli News Live, Stephen Ben Nunn, um, he independent of Dana Coverstone. He doesn't know anything about David Con Dana Coverstone as far as I know. Um, he's been talking about asteroids. And he says that he has these sources. He has a FEMA engineer, he has a guy in the White House, and he has another Pentagon official. And um, I guess from what I understand, uh, uh, Stephen used to be with the, the American CIA. So anyway, um, he reports that his, inside, his insiders have communicated to him that what the government has known for a long time that in the latter part of 2020 we would be entering into this asteroid debris field. Now I can't find anything about this so-called debris field from sources you might expect like NASA. Nobody's commenting on this, okay? In fact, uh, because of the COVID situation, they have closed down all of the uh, observatories except for the government run ones around the whole world. And so that lends itself to a lot of conspiracy theorists saying, oh, they know it's coming. They don't, they don't want anybody to see. These things, these, these theories sound wacky to me. I'm going to be honest. And when I listen to a lot of the things that Stephen Ben Nunn says on Israeli News Live, my initial response is this guy is a conspiracy theory wacko. Okay. Um, I wouldn't pay him any attention except what he is saying is kind of consistent with Dana's um, prophetic dreams and that in his second prophetic dream he saw some if you just go back and look at I'm not going to repeat everything but basically according to these second round of dreams that he's having in September something big is going to happen something you know that's going to change the nation and then in November something much much larger and much more terrible so bad that the Chinese and the and the uh, United Nations are over here to help us because things are so bad. And so th the reason that I bring that up is because the Israeli News Live guy, Stephen Ben Nunn, is saying that uh, that his sources are telling him that starting in September, everybody's going to know we're in trouble uh, because of these, this asteroid situation. Okay, so I, I bring that up, and if you want to see that stuff specifically, go back and look at my, my last videos. I talk about that. All right, now what I want the, what, the reason that I'm doing this video here, and I'm, I don't plan on doing another one on this topic because this isn't my thing really, but it, I, it has me thinking, okay, because I've never had a situation 
where an individual who is making some kind of prediction like this has a track record like this, where he, he's somebody that doesn't report, he doesn't claim to be a prophet, doesn't pl- claim to be a psychic or anything like that. And he feels that these dreams were from God, and he reported them, and then they, they all came true. I mean, he didn't report anything that didn't come true. That was it. And so now we have this second round. And so I think a lot of people, millions of people have seen this dream, and a lot of people are wondering, is this real? What's going to happen? Well, um, one of the possibilities is that, that that at least one of these may involve an asteroid strike. Now, the reason that I'm posting this is because within the last week, we have had um, some asteroid activity that 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 is kind of mm, unusual, and it does support their thesis that we are in an asteroid debris field. Okay, um, as some of you may know, um, again, this is uh, what's it? Today's the 21st. Just last Sunday, we had a car-sized asteroid that flew closer to the Earth than any asteroid in recorded history, okay, without hitting us, all right? It, it flew within 1,830 miles of the Earth, which is super close. Now, what is amazing about that was not that it didn't hit us, but that we didn't find it until it had already passed us. It was like six hours later. We said, hey, look at there. Wow. And they track back, and they go, wow, that actually... That could have hit us. It came that close. We didn't know anything about it. The thing was the the size of a Volvo. I mean, it was the size of a car, okay? And it just happened to miss us, and we didn't see it. So that was on Sunday. Well, today, that earthquake that we just experienced may well have been from an asteroid strike. Now, why do I say that? A Monroe, Michigan resident, Kim Broman Canales, uh, she was in her home, and you know the earthquake's epicenter was Monroe. So she was in her home, and she heard this boom, and it shook the house. And so she ran out of the house immediately with her camera with, on her cell phone, and she pointed it at the sky, and this is what she observed. Look, look in the sky. It looks like it went down. I wonder if something crashed. Look, look in the sky. It looks like it went down. I wonder if something crashed. You can clearly see the vapor trail, and you even see some of the some of the fire at the. If you look at the beginning of that vapor trail, you see the blaze in the sky as this thing is coming down. So we got a fiery object that's leaving a vapor trail straight down over Lake Erie. Okay, this is right after the earthquake that everybody experienced. So. Did this cause the earthquake? Strong suggestion that yes, it did. Um, In the comments, Sean Smith said, when bolides explode during the entrance of the Earth's atmosphere, they break the sound barrier, creating a sonic boom. That sonic boom then creates a shallow earthquake. The size of the earthquake depends on the size of the meteor and its explosion. Now, that may have been what happened here, okay? The sonic boom may have caused the earthquake, or the earthquake could have struck the water. There is some, not the earthquake, the asteroid could have struck the water. According to Wendy Stroop, she reports that she was aware of a boat of fishermen who reported 15-foot waves after this event. This has not been confirmed by anybody else, to my knowledge. It just happened today, just a few hours ago. So if you look at the, if you go to Facebook and you look up Kim Broman Canales, you can see the comments that were mentioned. And uh, this is just one of those comments. So I can't validate whether these fisher, this fisherman story is true or not, because it just happened. We'll have to wait and see. Um, a friend of mine who brought this to my attention mentioned that the news agencies are looking for evidence to, to back this kind of thing up. Some people report that a plane went down. Uh, I don't know about a plane because, I mean, unless it's a huge, fully packed 747 going 500 miles an hour, I just... I, I don't know that a plane, I mean, it's a, if it's a big plane, that might generate a small earthquake. It, when it lands, go, that's going to go boom. That can shake things up. But uh, nobody's missing a 747. It's like an explosion. Home shaking and things falling off walls. Just some of the aftermath heard and felt after an earthquake is recorded near Monroe. So far, no major injuries reported. Fox 2's Randy Wimley has the latest right now from Monroe County. What's shaking in Monroe County? 
I guess the ground apparently. My house. <laughs> True indeed. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, there was a 3.2 magnitude earthquake in the Monroe Harbor just before 7 o'clock Friday night, throwing some off balance. I felt the big thump. It's like, it kind of shook me off my feet a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I got a call that it was, there was an airplane going down in the water. Chatter about a plane crash in Monroe County spread almost as quickly as news of the quake, with one person saying they saw smoke on the water and reports of people hearing a loud boom. People all across the county, even all the way up to Metro Airport, heard the, the boom, whatever that was. And someone saw what we believe was a seaplane doing some touch and goes. And we believe what they saw, what they thought was smoke, was actually the mist from the seaplane touching the water. Coast Garden Area Fire Department rescue boats searched the waters for more than an hour, finding nothing. Everyone's <laughs> thinking there's a plane crash down the street, but it's an earthquake. The evidence to me is more consistent with an asteroid than with a plane at this point. So I bring this up because if indeed this does turn out to be asteroid activity, that's the second one in less, in, in less than a week that has had significant sequelae. That would suggest that the story of the debris field is valid. And what we expect to see from this debris field is an increase in the number of observed asteroids. And if you get a high enough number, it's kind of like crossing a four lane highway at, at, at rush hour. Eventually, you keep doing it, somebody significant is gonna get hit. So if this is happening, um, then maybe, just maybe, September or November may involve an asteroid collision. Don't know. Um, you know, at this point, it's kind of painful waiting around to see what's going to happen, if anything's going to happen. Just in case, you might want to store up some canned goods or something. Just in case. I don't know. It may be nothing. But if it is, um, I would go back and take a look at Dana Coverstone's dream and uh, just ask yourself, if this is valid, what does that mean? Because if we do get big events in September and a Whopper event in November, that validates, in my opinion, that the dream was from God. And the comment that he made in the end where the angel or God or whoever in the dream said, brace yourself, brace yourself, brace yourself, and endure to the end. Um, that kind of suggests, like, if these things are true, then the end is rather eminent. I mean, you take a look at it, look at the data, look, look, at, look at the evidence, and judge for yourself. Right now, it's inconclusive because we're not in September or November yet. Nothing may happen because usually when people are talking about end time stuff, pff, please, it's usually always wrong and it never amounts to anything. Most of the time. In fact, just about every time up to now when people say something that, oh, it's eminently, this is it. It's, it's always not. It's just wrong. And I don't, I don't like getting caught up in that stuff because it's mostly a mistake, um, fake, it's done for money, whatever. So... I don't know what's going to happen here, but if something happens, if, then we have to take that seriously. I, we just do. Okay? Thanks for watching.